Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 25 of my C-Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to be doing a ton of things. Mainly, I'm going to show you how to set up SQL Server as well as Visual Studio, all brand new versions. Literally, the newest version of Visual Studio just came out like a week ago. I'm going to show you how to create tables in SQL Server. I'm going to show, as well as in Visual Studio, I'm going to cover SSMS. I'm going to cover app config. I'm going to show you how to connect to a SQL Server database using C Sharp and a whole bunch of other different things. Like always, the code that I use is available in the description underneath the video and it's heavily commented. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to need to do is get SQL Server, and this is where it is, but if you just type in SQL Server 2016, and no, there isn't a 2017, this is the most up-to-date version, just go to Microsoft.com, da 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 that URL right there, you can pause it, or you can just go on to any browser and type in SQL Server 2016, and you'll get it. Then what you're going to want to do is come down here where it says Developer, and you just want to go and click on that and download that. You're going to probably have to set up a Microsoft account, but it's free. Everything's free, so don't worry about that. Then this guy's going to open up on your screen. You're specifically going to click on SQL Server 2016 Developer. And whenever that does, you're going to probably choose 64 up here, and all of this stuff is exactly as it's set up, and you're going to click on this guy. Whenever you do, this is going to pop up on your screen, and you're just going to come over here and click on Basic. Then after that, you're going to be accepting a whole bunch of things and hitting OK. So just click on Accept, and this is more than likely where you want to just have everything be default. You're not going to have any problems that way, and then click on Install. That's going to take a little bit to install, but then after it's all finished up, you might want to go and copy down some of this information. For example, your connection string that's going to pop up here on your screen, obviously it's probably going to be a little bit different than mine. Your log folder, if you want to look up any errors that you have, and so forth and so on. And then you're going to want to click on Install SSMS. Whatever you do, it's going to open up a browser. And you're going to want to download this guy, so come in here and click to download it. This is going to pop up on your screen. Of course, you're going to click on Install. And then that's going to take a little bit of time. After it's done, it's going to say Setup Complete. Click on Close. Then what you're going to want to do is come over here and find the SQL Server Management Tool that you just installed and click on that. And you're going to see it pop up on your screen. What you want to do here is copy this guy right here because we're going to be using that a little bit later on. You can just put it in text folder or whatever and then click on Install SSMS. Then when it opens up, you're going to see your database that's all set up inside of here. Just leave Windows Authentication on there and click on Connect. And at this point, if you do not have Visual Studio 2017, you're going to want to go to visualstudio.com forward slash downloads. And the version you specifically want is the community version, which is free. So just click on download and then click on OK and install everything in the default ports and everything will all be all set up for you. Then after you have Visual Studio 2017 installed, you're going to come up here and you're going to click on View and Server Explorer. Whenever you do, you're going to see this guy pop up right here. You're going to right click on data connections and you're going to come down here and click on create new SQL Server database. You may get an error message that says that you need to install missing packages, but everything's set up beautifully here. So what we just want to do is just click on OK and it's going to come in here and show you exactly what you need to install and you just need to install it. That's going to take a little bit of time. But after that installs, you may need to restart Visual Studio. You may not. Might as well be safe. What we're going to do is right click up here on Data Connections and once again go into Create New SQL Server Database. Whenever you do, this guy's going to pop on your screen. Obviously, your server name is going to be different than mine. You're going to keep Use Windows Authentication checked here and then you're going to give your database some type of name. I just called mine StoreDB. Then you're going to click on OK. All right, so now we got our database set up. Now it's time to create a table. You're going to right click on tables and then click on add new table. And then you're going to, if you want to actually have the example I have in this video work, you're going to go in here and set everything exactly the way you see it. So product ID, it's going to be an integer uh, product. It's going to be characters of 50 length, price, money, code. And you're going to once again have characters of 20 characters of length. You're also going to want to come down here and put products right here. After you have all that set up, you want to come up here and click on update. This little guy is going to pop up on your screen and you want to click on update database. Now if you want to go in here and actually put some products inside of your table, you're going to right click on products under the tables folder and go show table data. 
And then what I did was I just went in here and put in a whole bunch of different types of cereal. So the product ID is going to automatically auto update as you add additional. I put Cheerios, Lucky Charms, Checks Life, Raisin Bran. You can see all those. And then I also put it like an abbreviated code. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this in later parts of the tutorial, but that's what I got. After that, you can just click on right click on products again and go and create a new table. I created a customer's table. I'm not actually going to do anything with this in this part of the tutorial, but I might use it in a later part of the tutorial. You can go in there and play around, do whatever you'd like. And then, of course, after you're done, click on update. And now it's time to actually go in here and actually start writing some code to connect to the database. You're going to come over here in the search solution explorer and you're going to right click on references and click on add reference. This guy's going to pop up on your screen. You're going to scroll down until you see system configuration and put a check inside of there and then come down here and click on OK. Then you're going to open up your app.config file and it is over here, app config. So you're just going to open that guy up right there. And basically the app.config file is just going to store configuration data that you're going to use to connect to your database. And I went and put in a couple of these in here. You're going to actually type everything in here from app settings there down to here. That's all you're going to need to change with this file. Basically, system data SQL client is going to provide classes for accessing a SQL Server database, which is what we're using here, obviously. And then for the connection string, what you need to do is come over here and click on your database that you just created. And then you're going to come over here and you're going to copy the, all of this stuff exactly what you see right here. And then you're going to paste it in here for the connection string. And this is just going to define the database name and other parameters for connecting to your database. Then you're going to open up your program.cs file. And I'm actually going to go through here and go line by line and explain exactly how to connect to a SQL Server database and output data to make sure everything works. So you're going to need to go and get these two libraries right here. Make sure you put those inside of there. And then you're going to come in and go configuration manager. And this is just going to provide access to the configuration data that you just set inside of your app.config file. So we're going to call this well, actually, I'm going to come in here and define a string first, and I'm going to call this provider, and then configuration manager, app settings, and we're going to get what we marked as provider inside of there. And just to point this out, this is inside of the app config, so we're grabbing this guy right here, which is going to allow us to connect to our SQL Server database. Jump back over here. We're then going to do the same thing to connect. So we're just going to come in here like this and we're going to change this to connection string and we have that connection string over inside of the app config file so we're just going to go connection string right like this and now let's do some stuff with all this we're then going to go db provider factories factory and we're going to call this factory and i'll explain what this is here in a second and then db provider factories get factory and pass in that provider information and basically the get factory method here is just going to generate an instance of db provider factory and this guy right here is going to allow us to do things like pass queries to our database we're then going to type in using db connection and i'll just call this connection and this is going to represent our database connection for us here. And then I'll go factory and have it create our connection to our database. We then want to verify that we actually have a connection. And to do that, we go connection null. And if it comes back with a value of null, we know we have a problem. So we're going to come in here and say something like connection error, just to keep it simple. And then we'll come in and do a read line just to pause the screen so that you can see the error message and then if they this is all going to occur in the console and then if they hit return that's going to end our program and then going to go connection and connection string and this once again is going to be needed to open the correct database this is the data that's needed to open the correct database and we'll pass connection string to that we then want to open the database connection. So to do that, we just go connection and open. Then we're going to create a DB command, and this is going to allow us to pass queries to the database. So I'll just go command equal to and call the factory to create that option for us. 
We then want to verify that we're able to issue these commands. So put null inside of there. And then once again, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. So we'll just copy this rather than type it out again. And here we'll say something like command error. We then want to set the database connection for commands. So command connection equal to connection. We're then going to actually create the query that we want to issue. And I'm just gonna keep this very simple. It's just gonna be select everything from the table called products. And then we'll cycle through all that information, print it to the screen. The DB data reader is going to read the row results from our query if we have any results, which I know we will. So get data reader. And let's just call this data reader. Execute our reader. Then we need to cycle through our results. And how we do that is by calling the data reader with the method of read. And it's just going to read the results of each you know, row of results as we go through here based off of our query. And then what I wanna do is just come in here and output some simple information from the database. So I'm gonna go data reader and then I'm just going to put in whatever I called these pieces of data inside of our, inside of our database. So product ID was one of those things. And then we'll also go and get the product name. So once again, we'll go data reader followed by product. That's capitalized. Close off that curly bracket, close off that quote, and that's basically it. Now we just come down here to keep our consoles uh, open after everything has been executed. We're just gonna throw a read line inside of there. I don't think I have any errors, so let's try to run it and see if we can grab data from our database. And it opens up, and there you can see there's the product ID as well as the product name. All right, so there you go, guys. That is a lot of information on setting up SQL Server and working with the new Visual Studio and creating tables and executing things and grabbing data from tables inside of databases. I hope you guys found that tutorial very useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.